there my name is Melissa and I am a Oops. retired freight broker I've been in the industry since 1999 in some capacity um, I started on the manufacturing side working for a 3PL um, back in the 90s and in the early 2000s I was stationed in Mexico where I worked um, as a 3PL for a manufacturing plant um, in Pueblo Mexico um, I, I believe I was the, the forerunner of working from home because even back then when we had AOL dial-up, working from home, um, that's exactly what I did. And so I remember my computer saying, you got mail, you got mail, and I have to wait for that dial-up. So that's a little bit about me. Um, I am a retired freight broker after serving for as in an agent capacity for a large freight brokerage from 2006 upwards to 2020 um, where I had decided to go a different route and this actually will be my last um, group um, for now um, I'm taking a little break from group um, teaching and going more one-on-one -on -one helping people really build their business because of trucking being so massive um, I feel like I will be a better service to my clients my clients will be able to have a better service as well um, if we kind of customize their business in a way that will make it better for them so I just just showed you a um, a sheet here which is um, let me just unshare and make sure I'm sharing it correctly Okay, perfect. Um, wonderful. So this is called the Order of Business and it is a freight, freight broker company. Um, down in the section there, you will be receiving this. Um, again, it does have links to the product that's on, um, on my website. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you what that product looks like. Um, and this is for freight brokerage. Um, if you are own and operating a freight brokerage, this is the product for you. Um, if you are deciding to go a different route, maybe you're an agent, um, I would say you'd want to get into my milestone program. So down in the links, um, you'll be able to see where I'm also providing um, an agency type um connection so that way it will be more conformed around an agency versus all of the other things that uh freight brokerage has to do when you own a freight brokerage um you not are only responsible for your sales department and your dispatch department but also finances <clears throat> um etc so there is a lot of hats that you have to wear um when it comes to setting up your business so um, let me go to the library and show you um, what that looks like. So on this order of business, it says build the outline of your company business. So how do I set up a customer packet? If you click on this link, it's going to take you to a link that will show you not Oops. only a video, but it will show you how to set up your company documentation. So when creating a customer packet, nowhere in my program do I discuss um, a type of contract. Again, I recommend if you're gonna sign any contracts on the behalf of your company, you're gonna want to go out and get an attorney to do that or get some kind of legal um, representation. Nowhere will I, any of these documents are, are only a template. I am not an attorney. I am not an accountant. Um, I have no field in that legal arena, so there's a disclaimer. So please do go out and get the, the right advice for your company because your company may be different. Um, for example, if you run perishables, reefer free, your, your agreements need to be different. If you run high dollar titanium, it's going to be different. If you have electronics, it's going to be different. If you're doing hazmat, which is hazardous materials, it's going to be different. So it's important that you do get an attorney that has legal experience in the transportation industry so that you make sure that you're doing things correctly. 
here I am just to give you the basics if um, the basics of what needs to be done in order to run a particular um, freight brokerage and then obviously you're gonna want to just like if you were owning a restaurant you wouldn't go to one person um, that will now be the manager of your company um, as well as your you know your your sous chef and your chef as well as accounts payable accounts receivable inventory you have different people that are giving you different advice it's no different I'm not going to be the one all say all Oops. in everything that we do, but I will give you the basics so that you know what to do. All right. So how to set up your company documentation. This is what you would give to a customer, a shipper in order for the shipper to now haul with you. So you're going to create a customer packet. The very first page is the cover sheet. There is a template here and let me go ahead and show you what that template looks like. Um, you can download it right here, and it is a doc form. All of everything I do is a doc form. Um, this is just a basic template that I found on the internet. It's not mine, so I'm not taking any disclaimers to it. I'm just showing you what you could use. So here is some information. You'd want to put your name, your title, your company, your address, and then say, Dear Potential Customer. Then give some ideas of what you do and and what kind of um, freight that you haul and what are your niches, etc. I would say that if you're going to propose um, working for flatbed as one of your niches, you're going to want to have a cover sheet for any kind of steel customer. Um, if you're going to do overdimensional or heavy haul, you might have a different one for that or van and reefer. Um, because people do look at these things and again if you are doing email marketing I would not send any kind of customer documentation um, unless you're gonna stay on the phone and make sure they got it the reason why is because anything you attach as a brand new email address going to that customer server might be flagged as spam and anything that's attached has to go through rigorous um, checkpoints to make sure that it's not spam so when that happens, you might want to ensure um, that you stay on the line with your client and make sure that they got your packet, right? But if to randomly just send a packet to, you know, to as a cold emailing technique, I wouldn't recommend it um, just for the fact that it will go to spam. And if you're blocked on their servers, the chances of you getting your email address unblocked is very difficult and you'll have to have some conversations with them and with their IT department. So just for safety, safety, um, I would not send out a, a packet, so to speak. Anything that's even in a PDF file, I wouldn't do that on the very first email. Once they respond to you, you now are on their safe, safe list, right? And if you're on their safe list, you now become a warm lead. Now you can then send your documentation. So if they read your email, and they've responded, that would give me an indication that now I can now send that information there. A fault, you know, that's one of the faults of, uh, of doing business. So I just want you to be aware of that. The second page is the authority page. This is what you would receive from the Federal Motor Carrier um, Division about your company. Every carrier and every broker has one and you cannot service um, without it. So. If you have this and it is done and is dated, then this is saying this is licensed as evidence the applicant's authority to engage in operations. When you sign up for your F, your MC, whether through an agency or a non-agency, um, you're now representing whether you are a freight broker. So this will be the second page behind that cover sheet. The third page would be your W-9. And I went ahead and touch attached a, um, a W-9 um, and this W-9 is verifying what your tax ID number is. I would not attach page two through six. I would delete those. But if you need to understand what a W-9 is, there's the information. Again, I'm not a tax accountant. Um, so me telling you how to fill this out is based on my experience in business and not because I'm coming from any tax advantageous um, discussions. So depending on what type of corporation you're set up with, with the um, your state, 
you will now check mark that as well as your name, um, your address, and then your employer identification number. If you do want to know how to set up a broker carrier, I mean a broker company, if you go to my YouTube channel, um, there is a video inside my videos. Um, if you don't know them, my YouTube channel, it's under my name called Melissa Wokolo, and it's called A to Z, A to Z Checklist. So I am going to quickly show you that. Paying business bills feels like this, but it could be as simple as this. Melio is the online solution for all. My name. So if you come here to freight brokerage A to Z, um, if you have not gotten to this point where you have learned how to set up a brokerage, there is another step to this. So by the time you come to this class, you should have already made the decision to set up a company. But if you haven't made a decision to set up a company and you have not done it yet as a freight broker this a to z checklist will teach you how to do it all right so um if you haven't decided watch this first before you go into it there's a lot that's involved in owning and operating a freight brokerage and i need you to do all your research before you just jump in and say oh this is the business for me because it's going to be a lot of long nights and hard difficulties to get it off the ground, okay? Um, so that in itself is exactly um, exactly what you, you can do. So here is the W-9, um, and then you'd sign it and date it. And that is going to be the third page, for example. And it could be, you know, mixed up, but I'm just showing you what I would do. Is a W-9 attached. And the fourth page is contingent cargo. Now, not you do not need to have contingent cargo in order to, um, not necessarily for all shippers, yet if a shipper asks for this, you might have to follow their insurance guidelines to do business with them. So if they ask for your contingent cargo and they don't have any specifications, these are some of the contingent cargo policies that you would want to have. Um, a, a million in commercial general liability, a million in auto liability and then workman's comp you wouldn't have it because obviously you don't have any drivers etc um, but freight broker cargo legal liability is right there which is called contingent cargo of a hundred thousand what is contingent cargo uh, again I have another video on my YouTube channel um, that talks about contingent cargo so again um, you would just go to my YouTube channel and look for the video. Um, you would look for the video that has about contingent cargo. Let me go ahead and find that for you. Um, give me just one second. I will find the video for you. try to find it I'm gonna come back to that but there is a video on my YouTube channel called contingent cargo if you want to understand what are the liabilities of why you're gonna have contingent cargo like I said before not all shippers ask for this you might have to follow their insurance guidelines to do business with them but again these are the four things that you will need to have in order to set up your packet so inside of that our um, co-action biz, which is a freight broker course, there is a video that will walk you through step by step on how to do and create your customer packet. So the very first thing, like I said, is a cover sheet. And right here is attached as a cover sheet, which is similar to what this looks like. And then I talked about having to set it up. Then the authority the W-9 and then contingent cargo. 
a little bit later um, in today and tomorrow's um, Zoom meeting, we are going to be discussing how can you get around not having that high expense for contingent cargo, because it can range between five thousand dollars to nine thousand dollars a year, and that is a high expense to be able to fork out, not knowing whether or not you have a shipper or not. Um, but if you already have the money, you're going to be able to go into a different type of customer that when you get into customers that are what I would call the, the, the fortune 500 customers, you're not going to be able to get around not having contingent cargo, but there are some strategies that I'm going to share with you over the next couple of days that will show you how to not have contingent cargo. And again, you do not have to have contingent, car contingent cargo. If you have not set up a business yet, that means the business has not been established. Maybe you haven't went to your secretary of state. You haven't done your EIN, et cetera. This broker A to Z list will give you the necessary tools to set up your business. All right. Um, going back. The fifth page is a credit application. Um, there are a lot of people out there that are giving something called a, um, what's it called? Like a broker shipper agreement. In all of my history, I've never signed one um, where I initiated it. I always have the rules of engagement with the shipper. The shipper, if they want you to sign a contract, um, you will be in contract with them and you will follow their rules of engagement. So again, um, in my career, I've seen a lot and <clears throat> I've had a lot of things happen when it comes to contracts and insurance. So I'm gonna really quickly just share with you that there has been a time in my career um, where I had signed a contract that put me legally bound as a broker because as a broker, you do not have um, a broker is someone who brings the shipper and carrier together and you resume responsibility of the funds from the shipper and then you pay the carrier based on your credit terms. Um, so whatever your credit terms are with your carrier is the way that you base that with. And anytime you have any questions, we are going to stop about every half an hour so that you can ask questions and then we will move on. Okay. Um, so as we're going through that process of establishing that event, I signed a contract unknowingly, not with the advisement of legal. And in that I took possession of that freight. Long story short, because that possession now said that as a freight broker, because as a freight broker, you're just a liaison between the shipper and the carrier. The carrier is the one that takes possession of that freight. So legally, in regards to um, insurance, a contingent policy is just to pick up in the event that the, that the carrier's um, policy doesn't pick up. So with that being said, um, as you're going through that, you're going to see that if you ever sign a policy that you're taking possession of that freight, then if God forbid something should happen, that means you'd be liable. So do be careful that you're running a business. Don't be foolish and, and not do your due diligence. So that is a contingent cargo. The fifth page is the credit application. Um, there are some ways that you can verify credit and as a business you need to know how to do that how do you know whether or not a shipper is credit worthy i have attached a credit application this is the only thing that i would say that's super important that you have your um your shipper sign um, but if they don't sign it they can give you their own credit reference sheet which i've had that happen but if you can kind of maneuver and talk yourself into a way that they can now sign this credit application. And also you might want to put some wording at the bottom that if they don't pay within a certain term, um, like net 30, um, or after you get the credit application,
application filled out, you might now write back to them and say, hey, after running your credit, I need these credit terms at net 10. Are you willing to do that? Or net five, which net five means that they have to pay five days from the date of receipt of your invoice. Net 10 would be net 10. So there are areas where you can get some training when it comes to credit. And I'm not here, again, I'm not an accountant, I'm not a legal uh, a lawyer to give legal advice, but there are some companies that you can go to um, that will help you get the, the knowledge you need to run your business. When it comes to being um, in that position to know what type of credit would you wanna give to a shipper? Because if you don't give that area of your business a lot of thought, you could put yourself in a position where the shipper doesn't pay. Then how are you going to be at a uh, how are you going to pay the carrier? These are things that 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 maybe people don't talk about because it's not it's kind of like the ugly part of it, but it's not really because if you know how to manage your money and your structure is solid and your processes and your standard operating are solid then you're going to be in a better position to make the best decisions, right? So um, a real big company um, out there, um, which is Ansonia Credit. If you go to Ansonia Credit Data, um, if you get signed up, you can sign up and hit member login. You can call this phone number and sign up. Um, I believe every time that you take a credit report, it costs $10 every time. So I would... Um, take that into consideration when discussing that or, um, or using that because it will cost you $10. So don't go and, you know, set up all your customers. Make sure your customer's actually giving you a load um, before you, you know, double check credit. When you're doing this, also have them explain to you, how do I read your credit report? Let them go into detail and help you understand the ways that you can know um, how to extend credit to your shipper. Um, another one that's really good is called Duns and Bradstreet. Um, if you go to Duns and Bradstreet, again, Duns and Bradstreet does not use a lot when it comes to, um, they do do some, and Sonia Credit is really used in our transportation world. Um, and if you want to be part of Duns and Bradstreet, it will cost you upwards to $200 a month. Um, in order to be a part of it and to be able to run um, credit reports, it does cost you more than that. Another one is called CompuNet. Um, CompuNet Credit um, is another one um, called CoreLogic, which is about, they are, they are kind of like behind the scenes. They're the, the people that's behind that really drive the market and they've been in business a lot longer than the, than, than even um, yes. I knew I knew Core Lot CompuNet clear back in the 90s, so that's how long they've been around. So a CompuNet report um, is here, and it, they have um, bulletin list on like over. These are for shippers, manufacturers, brokers, and freight forwarders. So they keep an eye on things. So again. Um, Reach out to them, find out what those costs are so you have the right tools um, to be able to run your business um, in a way that is functional. So build the outline of your company business. Number one is a customer packet. Number two is a carrier packet. Number three is setting up credit SOP, standard operating procedures. So what does that mean? What does the standard operating procedure um, mean in, in so many ways? And how, how can you um, discuss that? So let me give you an example. I'm gonna write on here and then I'll erase it. To write a standard operating um, procedure, you have to really think, how is your house gonna be built, right? So let's just pretend that this is a house, right? has a door, um, and this is your business, okay? This is your home, whether you have a home office or a business, um, and you're gonna make that phone call, right? Your initial phone call to your shipper, um, and this is your shipper, and that shipper has to be credit worthy. 
So your process then would be then to check credit, right? So I'm gonna check credit. So that would be your first step. After your customer says, yes, I'm gonna give you their, my first shipment. From there, after the shipper has been established and you have checked you know, their, their credit report, one of the following, um, and Sonia, Duns and Bradstreet, or CompuNet. I can tell you, and Sonia is the is the most um, inexpensive type version. Um, then from there, you now have to secure a carrier, and so that's where we're going to discuss this carrier packet. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and clear all the drawings, and we are going to go back to this. So. Here is the called the carrier packet setup. And anyone who has access to um, a carrier, the carrier packet, um, again, if you click on this link, it will open up a link and it will tell you how do I create my carrier packet, my legal carrier compliance. Again, understanding. Um, One of the questions in our chat was, do you need shippers permission to run a business credit check? Um, no, you do not, but I would not run a credit check um, without securing a load first. And the reason why I do, why you do that, um, it's not personal. Once you're a business, it's public record. People are going to pull that. Um, and businesses run differently than personal. So again, because it costs so much to run a credit check on a shipper, I would just be careful um, doing that until you have established um, a relationship with them. So the way that I'm showing you is in the event that you are completely self-funded, meaning that you're going to be footing the bill to pay the carrier while you wait for funds from your shipper. Um, so this is all self-funded. If you're gonna go a, a route of factoring, which is another part when we get into the accounting part of the business model, we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, the factoring companies that will help pay for the funding of your company um, do have standard operating on how they established credit with shippers and so you would use their standard operating instead of your own internal standard operating and i hope that answers your question again i want to give a disclosure that i am not an attorney i'm only providing documents based on what i know um, in the industry but this is creating your legal carrier packet and i do want to really quickly um, notate that um, being a part of this we will be giving you as well um, a standard operating process on how it functions and how each office and each department functions. Um, so this will be given to you as a freight broker SOP template if you're part of um, my DYI program. And so since this Zoom meeting is the last group meeting I'm doing, um, this is available. This freight broker SOP template will be available when you purchase, um, which you've already done, um, because you're part of the Zoom meeting. For anyone that's ever watching this, um, anyone who has purchased the DYI will get a copy of this. And inside of here is called Carrier Compliance. A Carrier Compliance Department is super important. It's the legal bounds of your company. If you're not gonna invest in any type of research, this is the, absolutely the number one place that you need to spend your time doing it. This department has direct communication with core operations. They are a direct connect to both booking, sales, dispatch, legal, and every carrier and vendor is compliant to company policy and legal to operate as a motor carrier capacity hired vehicle. And there are so many legalities to get involved in it and so I did create and uh, produce a, an overview of what is expected. Now, this is very little 
compared to what needs to be done. And I probably could spend two hours talking about carrier compliance. I'm not going to spend two hours talking about carrier compliance. I am gonna say that if you want more training on it, um, you'll have to come back and purchase more um, because it is a beast to understand. And running a back office when it comes to carrier compliance is the backbone of your business. One small mistake, and I, I go in and I audit freight brokerages all the time. And the one area that I see the most faultiness is the back office of it. It is why so many people become agents because of the liability of what happens if one of your employees or even yourself doesn't do the due diligence. And it is a super negative place to be if you're not doing it correctly. Um, so right here is an overview of carrier compliance um, and do schedule a one-on-one. -on -one. Um, it is the best money you'll ever spend um, if you will go and do it. So what do you need to send to a carrier? I would recommend using an online packet, um, something like um, carrierpackets.com. Um, mycarrierpackets.com, I believe it's about $200, $200 a month um, for mycarrierpackets.com and it does come with a safer watch assure subscription. What is my carrier packet? A carrier packet is an electronic packet that allows you to send this carrier packet to um, the carrier packet link to your carrier and they will online onboard. Doesn't mean that the information comes into your TMS software um, automatically. It doesn't work like that, unfortunately. But what it does do is it makes it easier to onboard a carrier. A carrier will get frustrated if they have to fill out PDF formats. Um, so having something like carrierpackets.com, and again, I don't promote carrierpackets.com. I'm going to give you three of the top three that I know. RMIS, um, RMIS is another one um, that you could um, discuss and, and work with as a packet. Um, and another one that does electronic packets is ITS onboarding, which is a, um, a form for is an is a brand or a company of truck stop so ITS onboarding um, I believe that they're 250 RMIS if I understand right is the most expensive um, and my carrier packets is the least expensive option um, in pricing and I can say from a carrier standpoint and understanding the carrier standpoint my carrier packets is the best and fastest one um, for the carrier um, so if I was to choose and have my opinion, I think my carrier packs is, is, um, is a lot faster and easier to use. Again, just because you um, send out a link does not mean it comes automatically into your transportation management software. All right. So again, this is the video that will show you how to do your legal compliance. And then I did attach a broker carrier agreement um, that you can download that's in a document form. Again, this is a broker carrier agreement given by best standard, um, best practices from a surety bond company. Um, actually, it came from Pacific Financial. So again, if you're going to use this, make sure that you understand that you need to get um, educated when it comes to cargo insurance and what's expected. People go out and buy surety bond information, but then they don't go and get educated on contingent cargo. They don't get educated that if you haul free for freight, there are things you need to have in your broker or carrier agreement and you need to have certain disclaimers um, if you haul reefer freight. Um, knowing that on your surety bond, if you're hauling reefer freight, you should now disclose that to your surety bond company. If you haul high dollar freight or electronics, these are things that you need to disclose. If your customer requires $250,000 in cargo, yet you put a $100,000 in cargo company on a $250,000 shipment, 
the customer would never know you're cutting corners, but God forbid it sh anything should ever happen. You would be liable for the rest because of the difference or even all of the bill in the court of contingency because you did not do your due diligence and follow the main practices of a carrier compliance department. And that is the negative of business and running from cradle to grave, uh, meaning that you run your business with a lot of different hats. Because sometimes we think about, I just need a deal, let me cut corners, and don't think of it from a business perspective, that if you do cut those corners, what the consequences will be. And so don't ever let money stop you, you know, or hinder you from making the right decisions. Again, I say that with a disclosure of um, setting up your credit SOP we've already discussed. Now we have to say, okay, how do I build a relationship with a shipper? How do I build a relationship with a shipper? This is going to be the most tiresome, most difficult, most frustrating part of your walk in freight brokerage. The, the reality, it's a very simple process that most don't want to do. The reality, it is a simple, simple, simple process that most people just won't want to do. If I was to say that the process is so simple, there's only two steps. Only two. One, two. And you repeat those steps. You call, you get an email. That email ha now becomes interested. So that's the status. That call email, if you don't get an email process, stays as potential. So if you don't get an email address, it's potential. Then once you get the email address, you now do one, two again. Call, email. Then you do one, two again. Call, email. And then you do again. Call, email. That's the process. However, that process is what most people will never do. It is a number one breakdown in businesses because they just don't do it. But can I break it down for you? A full sales pipeline, a full sales pipeline um, is about 150 phone calls. So if your pipeline has 150 good leads inside your pipeline, if your pipeline's full, you wouldn't be complaining. How you follow up, the money, the follow-up is in the money. Now, I'm not going to go over step-by-step um, step on how to cold call and how to win. But I do have a process that's been working for me for the last 15 years. And I have made it better by using a software um, that I can see and win at. And I'm closing deals for, for clients um, because I do do cold calling for clients. Um, I have a process that not only worked on paper, but also works in a digital form. Um, you'll have to set up a one-on-one -on -one call with that. So again, um, I could set up your whole process for about $150 um, and you will win. It's worth the extra to do it. It's worth that extra because you will win if you do it correctly. All right. So here is called cold calling. Um, not only, um, have I shown step-by-step step how cold calling works? This is for a particular client. We called, um, this is a live cold call with a closing within two days. So in part one, um, you're going to hear me call on behalf of the company um, to a shipper, brand new shipper, don't even know him, complete cold call. She referred me to their corporate offices, which is in part two, where I left a voicemail. And then in part three, that 
re that shipper called back. We closed the deal. And, and if you look here, we received an email. We received an email on step number three. If you look here, um, I, I, this is part number two. And once you got to part number three, you'll see that Vancouver, Washington to Sioux City, Nebraska. Thank you. Request for quote standard load. And Tony wrote back. And this is within two, two business days we closed this deal. Um, and all we did was 30 sales calls every single day. 30 sales calls every single day. So this is inside your co-action. It's on your checklist to be able to call. And then if you come here to cold emailing, um, this strategy right here, which is my book of business strategy number five, it will explain how to do cold emailing um, when it comes to strategy. I wish I could spend five hours talking to you about sales. It is the number one place you're gonna get discouraged in. If you don't have shippers, you don't have a business, I wish I could tell you in depth how to do that, but this course is to have, teach you how to run a freight brokerage business. To get into the nitty gritty details of a milestone um, is a different program that I have available that will really dig into shippers and sales. Um, just like you're opening up any business, we can't go into um, we can't go into how to cook the most fantastic recipe that people keep on coming back for more if you owned a restaurant. So I can't teach that tonight or tomorrow night because it would be something that would come on over time. Because if I try to jam pack everything, you will come to a place where you're like, oh my gosh, overload, overload. So that is where I'm showing you the best way is the checklist to learn at your own pace by going from cold calling to emailing. Also, social media, LinkedIn is a great place, but do not put all of your eggs in that basket. If you do use LinkedIn, people are using it. They're winning in it. Um, I'm even winning in it. Um, but if you do that, it's going to be a longer process. I do recommend to do what everybody else is not doing, which is making the cold calls and following up. Most clients will say no to you, but the reason why they're saying no is because let me just be honest with you. You're being stupid. Can I just say that? I'm being honest. If you call them and you don't follow up again, after they said no, no means next opportunity. If you decide to take no for an answer, you shouldn't be in business. Get out while you can. Because no means I'm going to call them again. Don't overrate it and say I'm going to call them the next day. You're going to call them every single week. If you call them on a Wednesday at 10 a.m. the first time and they sounded like, okay, they said no, Try again the next time on the same time, Wednesday at 10 a.m. And see if they do not. Let that be your focal point and you're talking and you're discussing and everything that you're doing. Again, you will have inside of your portal, um, if you go to your library, um, you will also have the number one sales plan. We have in here 24 videos as well as step-by-step how to get through each and every week of a 12 week program when it comes to sales. This right here is massive. If you follow this program 100%, you call, you email. If you go through week one and say, okay, let me target shippers. Here's how I target shippers. This is where I find my shippers. Once I got the email address, this will tell you me how I got that email address. Then how do I op send the email to them? If you, right here's an email template. Then if you go into your, your coaching session, which is, okay, what are we going to talk about? What's important? How do we discuss this? Now, right here, we no longer have a live meeting anymore. Um, it no longer exists. So don't, don't follow that link because it doesn't mean anything. Um, what the links are is right here. 
that webinar that was live, you have the two replays right here. Again, that live has the replays right here. So if you're watching those replays, those are the replays. We had two 12-week um, intense webinars this last year and this year, and those are the two replays. So it will tell you in Target, if you go through number one sales plan, write this down, number one sales plan, if you go through this and condition yourself, now listen to me, condition yourself to do this week by week, call, email, call, email. Now, I can tell you that we can come up with a program that doesn't cost you anything and you could just use Google Sheets. Or there is something that I do have a CRM um, that I would love to send to you if you want it at the end of this, also down in the, the comments, I will send it to you. Um, at the very end of today and tomorrow, we'll go into more detail. Um, a CRM that does email marketing for you. Um, and today, we had a, young, a client that we were talking on the phone. She calls me and says, hey, I got, a, I got a quote. And I said, wonderful. So I logged into her CRM and I looked at the quote. Um, the CRM is a customer relationship management tool that I use called Close. Um, I logged into her, her system and we found out that she had emailed them six times. Isn't that fantastic? She emailed her six times. She'd only talked to them twice and they emailed back and gave her a quote. Now that's fantastic. Wonderful. That's how it works. Find ways that you can cut corners by using technology. Now, this program is set up to do it manually, but there are things that you and I can do as a team. I do it now for $150 um, where I set up the direct shippers and do that. So again, if you want that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop my email address, send me an email and put in the subject line, I want my email organized. I want my sales plan to be organized in the subject line and I'll know what you're talking about and I'll set you up so that you can win. All right. Write an email to me, put a subject line. I want my sales plan to be organized and I will send you an invoice. We'll pay for it. We'll get you on the schedule. We'll get you a plan that will work. All right. Again, here is sell your services are for a price. What is the service cost? How do I find shippers, right? Where do I find them at? What am I doing? This is the greatest thing that you could ever watch is these five sessions of the book of business sessions. This will tell you how to find shippers. And remember I talked to you earlier about contingent cargo, like maybe you don't have the contingent insurance, you haven't spent the $5,000 to $9,000 to invest in contingent cargo insurance. Insurance for contingent cargo is when you, it's just a fuzzy feeling that the shippers get that you are taking liability when you're really not for their, for their, uh, it's like a double layer of insurance in the event something should happen to the carrier's insurance, then they know that there's going to be something on the broker. That is why they do it. Um, it's, it gives them a lovely fuzzy feeling. Um, but there are some strategies where you can find shippers that are between 5 million and 50 million, which are smaller companies. Two ways why you want to do that. Number one, you're going in there as a shipper, um, as a broker to a shipper, and it's going to be an easier in. You're going to hit that gatekeeper. I'm not going to say this happens all the time. But there are going to be opportunities where that gatekeeper opens up that door easier, right? So by doing that and, and letting it become easier for you to get inside that door is going to help you do it. Another way is, is the smaller the company, the most informal they are when it comes to things like contingent cargo. So these five sessions really will show you how to strategize build your business, build your book of business. It is the most five best webinars I've ever made. I've actually made more money on these five webinars than I've done in anything else I've ever done when it comes to consulting. So that is also involved there as well. So sell your services. What is the price? Who are you? Don't cut your pricing. 
Don't try to just make 50 bucks. You don't just want to get in the door. Find a way to understand your value and what you're worth because it is hard out there. For every 500 loads, there's one truck in some areas. Some, some areas, there's 3,000 loads to one truck. The competition, um, the competition is so brutal. So you have to be ahead of the game. So number four, after you have done all of your organization and getting everything set up, what do you do? You provide the shipper with your initial information once they request it. Again, I said from the beginning, do not just send out the customer packet that you set up just because you wanna flaunt or show um, your customer packet. Chances are, if you send your customer packet the first time, um, it's gonna get spammed. You're gonna go in their spam and it's gonna be a headache to get you out of their spam. So making sure that you know that that customer packet um, needs to be sent once the customer has already agreed. Stay on the phone with them while they get it so that they make sure that they get it so it doesn't go into their spam, okay? Continue to follow up with your sales pipeline till you receive a free quote request. I'm gonna make that in red. That's how darn important um, that is. It's so important, I'm gonna make it bold. Say money is in the follow-up. Money is in the follow-up. Your money, someone has your money. Those shippers have your money. They want, they have your money. They have your profit. They have your livelihood. They have your dream. And are you just gonna let it go? Are you going to do exactly what I tell you? I have had probably about 100 conversations over the last quarter, and they say, I wish I would have met you earlier. I wish I wouldn't have spent three, four, five thousand dollars on stuff that I don't need because everyone has an opinion. I wish I would have met you back in the day where, where you would just help me get organized because you cannot sell something that you yourself aren't doing. If you're thinking about hiring agents, yet you cannot even sell, you can't even do it yourself, how are you going to sell someone on an idea to build your company when you can't even sell yourself? You're not even bought into the sell. Plain and simple. You're not even built into it, but that's for another day. The idea is, is that you need to have a process that you stick to. Allow me to help you stick to it. I wish I could bring all of my 15 years as an agent to this table and all of my 21 years in manufacturing and transportation and logistics to be able to bring it all to you in, in, in six hours, that, I mean, three, three and almost four hours that we're gonna spend together. I wish I could bring all of that to the table but unfortunately, I can't. I can't bring all of that to the table. I'm not allowed to because it would, it would take me forever to bring all my experience to the table. But I can tell you that from the beginning, from the very first breath, if you go back to the very first part of this video, I said something. Most people won't get it. That this isn't rocket science. The fact is, is that most people will fail. And the reason why is because they don't have the desire nor the drive or the passion to be able to make cold calls even when they don't feel like it. Even when they don't feel like it. They, 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 they don't even make those phone calls. They just don't feel like it. They absolutely do not feel like it. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a hint here. He, right here really quick is called on my YouTube channel. Please go and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. So you keep on getting stuff, right? Book a business real talk. Whenever you feel like quitting and you just feel like I can't do it anymore, I don't want to do it anymore, I want you to play part of this video. If you get through this video, on your way to work, if you're driving, on your way back from church, wherever you're at, if you do not listen to this video a lot, 
then there's something you're gonna you're gonna if you wait till you feel like making cold calls you'll never do it plain and simple but the reality is is that you only need to make 30 phone calls a day to win the average salesperson whether you're in manufacturing where you sell t-shirts whether you are a marketer whatever manufacturing distributor any part of sales process the average salesperson makes 30 phone calls and has a pipeline of 150. The average person makes 30 phone calls a day. The reason why people make it so difficult is because they don't do it. They just don't do it. If you did 150 phone call, 150 phone calls are in 150 leads are in your sales pipeline and you divide it by 30, that's five. All you have to do is make 30 phone calls. And reality is, is that the average time that you're on the phone is about a minute and a half. So with dialing, especially if you use the CRM close.com where it dials for you and the calls are in there and it's recorded so you can remember what you talked about last time. And then you could also critique yourself by listening to the calls and critique which way do I need to talk? Did I do this right? You can hire a coach like myself to hear you and touch touch those calls and help you get through some of those calls so that you can perfect your sales game and you get serious about your sales game, that's when you're going to win. It's going to maybe take an hour and a half, maybe an hour and a half to two hours to make 30 phone calls. My goodness, whippity doo doo. Shipper sends your company a quote request. How do you spot quote? That's the big question. Right here under Bob strategy number one, it talks, how do you quote? It's an hour long. This will give you everything you need to know on how to quote. Everything you need to know on how to quote is right here. Basically, the spot market is where you're going to stay in the beginning. Um, fighting with everyone else and all of the thousands and thousands of other brokers that are competing um, with you. Um, I'm just going to share my screen for just a second and I'm going to go to a shipper um, that I know of coming out of, of Wadley, Georgia. And I'm going to just show you what it's like to be in Wadley, Georgia. If you come here to five flatbed and I put in Wadley, Georgia, and I search for loads, right? Do you know how many customer brokers are posting Wadley, Georgia? How many? Oh my gosh, it's so many, you won't even, you won't even believe it. Well, maybe there isn't. Maybe they have, okay, there they are. Wadley, Georgia, total logistics. Priority one, Landstar, online, priority, DSV, Mats in America. So there's so many that are posting. So you have to do your research. And so it's called digging. It's called digging. And so that webinar or that webinar, which is book of business session number one, will show you how to dig. How do I find out what other people are doing and how do I win? Fantastic webinar. Once your shipper sends you a company request quote, you'll need to know how. Don't wait to watch this video when you get it. Do it now, walk through it, do strategy, pretend you got a quote and how quickly you can edit it, understanding your standard operating, writing down what you would do first, second, third, and fourth in this process. So the shipper, you've been contacting the shippers, you've been calling them, you've been following up, and now you got your quote. So what do you do next? Watch that video ahead of time. Make sure you're writing out what you do first, second, third, and fourth. Um, in order to get that quote and then ship it back. I would never quote a customer unless you have capacity. Hello? I would never quote a customer unless you have capacity. I would never quote a customer unless you have capacity. But I can tell you that if you quote 
a shipment that's $7 a mile or $8 a mile and not less than $2,500 ever, you will always win. Again, if you quote seven or $8 a mile, so if you said it's a 500 mile run and I quote $8 a mile, that's four grand. Okay, if you quote seven or $8 a mile, you will always win no less than 2,500. You will always win. No matter the miles, 2,500. That's when you're here, your customers say, I need a truck now. You know what? My truck just fell off and I need a truck now. And you're on the phone with them. That is how you do it. You hit the eight key. You hit the eight key and you do it as long as it's not oversized, as long as it's not, doesn't need dimensions, as long as it's not hazmat. You somewhere, somehow will find a truck if you're at eight bucks a mile just food for thought your company quotes the shipment then the next step is the shipper awards your company with the shipment informally verbally if they send you and give you everything verbally over the phone follow up with an email to dictate your agreement in writing so you'd say you just gave me over the phone as a per our conversation cyi cya cover your a blank 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 Follow up with an email, dictate your agreement in writing. As per our conversation, I am writing this to tell you that we agreed to pick up at X time at this location to deliver to this location using this equipment, et cetera, et cetera. And you're formally released and show all the details of the shipment, including pricing, including pricing including pricing and you're now saying okay if if they if they ship me, shipper awards me a company shipment what do i do what are the questions i ask right well let's do it together the questions you're going to ask are if the shipper gives me a shipment I'm doing this on the fly. That's how quickly you have to do things on the fly. Number one question would be, um, what time does it pick up and deliver? What is the shipper city or address? I, I doubt that they're going to give you the address over the phone, but they might. And consignee, which is a delivery city address. What type of equipment? For example, van, flat, reefer, etc. And then if it is a flatbed, which is an open trailer, you need to have understand that this conversation we're not talking about different types of trailer types i didn't do that because i'm going to re refer you to a portion of my course that will make you go through that research all right so a flatbed one of the things you're going to ask is um what type of securement does it need straps tarps Coil racks. The only time you would ever ask if it needs coil racks, by the way, is if the, you hear the word coil. The only time that you would ever ask if it needs coil racks is if you hear the word coil. Um, edge protectors. Chains. And or binders. Okay? So... Um, another thing that you would ask them is the weight of the shipment. Another thing that you would ask them is we agreed, you're going to repeat this. We agreed on this pricing and then list the price. Okay. All right, approve the shipper's credit. Remember we talked about the shipper's credit. 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and put in here CompuNet and CoreLogic, which is not on. I didn't do that from before. So we're going to, I'm going to add that to your spreadsheet. Perfect. If you're outsourcing funding to a factoring company, you would use their platform, right? Um, and then tomorrow, what we're going to go through is the process and business model of how to set up your business. So we're going over an overview and checklist tonight. We're going to get through the rest of this tonight. Um, and then we're going to go through step by step by department. So that's tomorrow. Um, and then we're going to set up a special time um, at the very end of tomorrow to talk about my CRM um, that I love and use, um, that I know are winning, um, which I have been in the industry for, like I said, since 1999. I've used a paper policy, a book, literally a book with 12 dividers inside of it, a binder, um, that I knew that if I called number one, step one, and I put everything in it under step one, by step two, by step three, by step four, um, you'll know this because even inside my number one sales plan that we talked about, um, the number one sales plan that I was showing you, if you go to welcome to the program, do this first, there's my book. There's my book right there. That's my book. I have been using that type of book for over 15 years. And I knew that once I got to step number six, so every time that I would make a phone call and email, I move it to step two. Then once I called the second time, I moved it to step three. Once I called the third time, I moved it to step four. Once I called the fourth time, I moved it to step five. Once I called number five, I moved it to step six. I did that for years. And at step six to eight, between six and eight calls, I was winning. And I called them every week diligently. That is how you do it. And of course, I'm like you. I made mistakes. I built a book of business on three clients that was worth over $9 million in sales. And my, my corporate office of my agency would say, you need to be, you need to be more diversified. And I would get hammered on, you know, but these are the things that I've made those mistakes. And these are the things I did wrong. But I will tell you that I went digital about three months ago and it has changed the way that I do business. Not only am I selling in like four to five weeks, I've cut down my chances of closing. I've done some things that I've changed. I've done the email marketing that it does it for me. Technology has really changed and I'm gonna be able to help you get that off the ground if you are a techie person. If you're not a techie person, I will tell you that this process of, of the book, it absolutely 100% works. It works. So go out there and get it done. Verify your locations, shipper, and consignee hours of operation. This is an admin type division of work of labor, um, but it is the most costly. If you do not verify the shipper and consignee's hours of operation, even if your customer says ASAP, 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 there will be a problem because the first thing the customer is going to do is say, why didn't you call ahead? So this is where money can be absolutely costing your company, where you're going to lose money a lot if you do not verify the location, shipper and consignee and be detail oriented. The next thing you're going to do is create the shipment in your TMS software. So before you put the information into your TMS software, verify those shipper and consignee, um, or go ahead and put it in your TMS software, and then you verify. If you do not have a TMS software, um, on my website, if you go to the library, let me find it. If you go to the library, there is a workbook. Hmm. I'm going to 
gonna try to find it for you. Freight Brokerage Workbook right here called Freight Brokerage Workbook. It's free. Anyone who signs up for my website can use it. If you open up and view the product, there is a Excel spreadsheet um, with a video on how to use it. You can move about 10 shipments a day using this spreadsheet without going to a TMS software. I wouldn't recommend doing that um, because it will get confusing. But if you read here, there's 13 comments of people that are using this and they're using it today and there's a lot of comments where they actually are using it and it works, okay? So definitely um, think about that when you're creating your shipment in your TMS software. Secure a carrier to fill your shipment's request load. How do you do that? You need to get the education and using DAT load boards and truck load boards. Um, I personally um, am not gonna spend a lot of time inside this shipper request, um, finding a carrier to fill your shipper's request um, because the best way I can tell you to do it is to make the phone calls. There are ways of strategy that you can fulfill them. If you're gonna use load boards like DAT and Truck Stop, um, the load boards that, that I would recommend are DAT, Truck Stop, and 123 Load Board. If you can get demos or watch YouTube videos on how to run these, um, that would be the best way to, to get it done. Um, another thing for a TMS software, there is called ITS Dispatch, um, uh, DAT um, has a, a TMS software, Ascend has a TMS software, um, Ajax, has a TMS software. Those are four of the top ones. Um, I think it's Algex. Has a, diff, um, a TMS software. Those four are the top ones that I could think of um, that you could possibly use for your TMS. I think Ascend is the least expensive out of all of them, um, but I'm not promoting them. I don't even know what Ascend is. I've never used it um, again, so but those are softwares that you could use. Um, send the carrier packet to the carrier for completion. Remember we talked about the different carrier packets that you would send. Um, you could go to www.mycarrierpackets.com. Another one is RMIS. Um, and another one is ITS onboarding. Those are electronic packets, um, but you can also use a PDF file as well. Once you receive all the carrier documents, vet them. So here's a video for the carrier compliance department on how to vet your carrier. Understand that before you start your business, before you even start getting a shipment and moving it, you should understand your standard operating. Understand how the process works. What will you need to do to create your carrier packet? And the best way to do this, I'm gonna tell you, if you go through this page five or six times, watching, rewatching, watching, rewatching, watching, rewatching, even this video, if you go through this video three or four times and, and walk out the process of your business, Okay, I will do this first, and then this second, and then this third, and then this fourth. You will absolutely know how to run your business. There is no reason why you shouldn't be able to run your business. And do some mocking. Mock through it. Pretend you got a shipment and walk through what you would do first, second, third, and fourth. Even use a family member to send them an email and have them fill out the packet and send it back. And then what you do to vet it and how quickly does it take you to get it into the TMS software and time yourself so you become quicker and faster as you go through the process. This is how you're going to win. If you wait until you actually land that deal before you go through the processes of running a brokerage and not going through, let me just give you an example. Do you think the Apple computer 
just went to market just one day? No. They went through many, many trial tests to see if it was functional, if it would not blow up. And over and over and over and over and over again to make sure it wouldn't blow up. They put in the energy to make sure that their product and their output was top notch. Why do companies not do the testing? Go through this checklist step by step by step by step. Know your stuff. And if you do it over and over and over again and testing out each portion, number 13, I'm going to test this one. Number 14, I'm going to test this one. Number 15, I'm going to test this one. Okay, let me go there. Set up your appointments with your shippers and your receivers based on the carrier schedule. So how do you do that? When you're going through the track and trace of a shipment, you're going to discuss on how to track and trace this shipment. You're going to discuss with them, when would you like your appointment? And based on that, and based on when you would like your appointment, we'll determine on whether or not you're going to set your appointment and at what time. Super important. If you don't set it up correctly and you do not see why A, cover your butt, you're going to have a problem. You're going to definitely have a problem. And that problem is simply you need to do better. You just need to do better. Better, better, better. Okay? Um, and then... Send a rate confirmation to the carrier. How do you get a rate confirmation? You can use the workbook that I just talked about, um, that I just showed you just a few minutes ago. Um, this workbook, there's a rate, rate confirmation inside of it right here. You can download it. Um, if you want to use an Excel or Google, you can actually upload it to Google as well, Google Sheets, because it is a sheet. It's an Excel spreadsheet. Um, or if you use a TMS software like ITS Dispatch, DATS Sender, Ajax, Algex, you can now um, create a rate confirmation. What is a rate confirmation? A rate confirmation will show where it's picking up and where it's delivering and what the agreed rate is. So you will send that to the carrier. The carrier is going to sign the agreement, sign it, and send it back to you. Once you receive the rate confirmation signed by the carrier, you will now put it into tracking. Tracking is where you make sure that you dispatch the driver. The word booked means that the shipment is booked. The word dispatched means that the driver is physically driving to the pickup. So in order to track a shipment, your customer requires you most customers, not all of them, but if you want to give good service, they'll require you to update the client of the ETA to pick up, update the client of arrival at origin, update the client when it was picked up, when the freight is on side of the trailer, update the client at least twice per day, update the client of arrival at destination, update the client of delivery. If you go through this process from beginning to end you're going to win if you update your client every time and you track your shipment this way it will work so a quick overview um, when we go to do tracking tomorrow we will talk about miles we will talk about how the miles are ran how the miles um, how to calculate rate per mile how to calculate um, how quickly something can be there um, the best formula is to take the miles divided by 50. So if it's 200 miles and you divide it by 50, it's going to take you four hours to get there from the time that the driver is loaded. Now keep in mind, you have to not just say, I'm going to be there in four hours. If you got loaded at four o'clock, you wouldn't just tell the receiver, the, the customer that he'll be there at 8 p.m. Not knowing whether or not the receiver is open at 8 p.m. at night. So you might say, well, the driver will be there in the morning because they're already closed at 8 p.m. at night. Another thing, too, is a driver usually can run 500 miles a day. If you divide that by 50, that's 10 hours. Just take that into effect. Do you know what your driver, 
has left on his log in order to run that run. So the best way to do is anytime that the shipment is over 200 miles, just ask the driver, when are you going to deliver? Then you give the customer that ETA. Plain and simple. Always ask the driver. That's how a broker does it. Don't go into a lot of, oh, do you, how many hours do you have? What's your hours of service? Basically, just ask the driver. He knows his logbook. He understands his logbook. Ask the driver. Not the dispatcher, the driver. There are GPSs and there are electronic things like MacroPoint is a GPS that you can buy for about $112 to $115 a month, $130 a month. You can now track all of your drivers using MacroPoint. You can make that part of your policy that every shipment that you haul, they have to now do MacroPoint. If you are part of the ITS dispatch, they already have it included in their and their pricing so you can now set up everyone on tracking um, which is a really good i don't know about dat ascend aljax whether they do that or not um, but i know its dispatch does de do it once a driver has made it to delivery you're going to receive that proof of delivery what is a proof of delivery upon pickup of your shipment upon number a upon the pickup right here the pickup the shipper is going to give him a bill of lading, and we're going to talk a little bit about that tomorrow. A bill of lading shows where it's picking up and where it's delivering, and that proof of delivery is when the receiver receives it signed clear and free of all damages. One of the biggest legalities that most dispatchers, most freight brokers don't say is when a shipment's about ready to be delivered, you must use these words. Is the POD signed clear and free of all damages? Make sure your dispatchers yourself are saying that. That way you're not caught off surprised when the bill lading comes in and there's documentation that the driver didn't tarp or the driver did something wrong or there was a missing product. Um, that way you can get ahead of any kind of claims, et cetera, um, before they ever happen. Knock on wood, I've only received four claims in my career um, and God forbid that it should ever happen again. The last one almost made me vomit. That's how bad it was. So number 20, self-funding. Um, if you are self-funded, that means you're paying, you're receiving the money from the client and you physically from your company is paying the carrier. Using that proof of delivery is what you need in order to get paid. So you're gonna invoice the client with an invoice. Something like QuickBooks is a good, good software. Um, QuickBooks Online. Um, is a good software for a lot of reasons because if you ever get clients, um, if you go to QuickBooks Online um, and find out how much it costs, you can now see um, how much um, the pricing and the plans are. Um, you can now send some of these plans, like the plus one, you can send, um, you, can, you can pay the carrier online um, using this. Um, another way that um, I have used and, 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 and no works is called e-checks with deluxe. Um, if you want to read about e-checks, this is a way to um, pay a carrier immediately is through e-checks. Um, what it does is it sends them a e-check through their email. They can print that check off and take it to their bank or they can electronically put the money in their account by adding their debit information and it will become an ACH. Um, so, uh, and e-checks are very inexpensive, so that's a way to pay carriers. Um, but also QuickBooks is accounting software that allows you to invoice your client and they can pay with a credit card um, or they can pay with ACH or they can pay you with a check by sending it through the mail, um, whatever your customer does or requires. Um, but if you're self-funded, you're gonna send them an invoice with the release, whether it's an email stating what the money is. Remember I talked about informal. Um, some customers will just talk over the phone informal, or they might send you a release telling you what they're paying. So you'll want to print that off and put that with the invoice in the POD, scan them together um, and send it to the client with the invoice, then follow up with a phone call to make sure that they received it. You're gonna wanna follow up with your invoices and make sure the accounts receivable department of your client, your shipper, does receive that invoice. 
And the reason why you want to do that is the last thing you want to do is thinking that they're going to have net, the, the money's going to, you know, be there and then they don't pay, okay? Receive payment with your client on your agreed terms. Understanding that if it's more than a day later, you're, you're going to the agreed terms, you're making sure it happens, and then you're paying your carrier based on your agreed terms. You receive a profit once that whole transaction is complete. We're going to talk more about that tomorrow when we go through each department um, in detail, but I'm just doing an overview. And then to number 21, the very last part of this whole process as a freight broker is if you outsource, outsource funding, then you would send the POD to your outsource company, which is your factoring company, based on their requirements. Then the outsource company or the factoring company invoices the client, the outsource company pays the carrier, and you receive a profit after their charges net profit. If you do want, do not have a factoring company, um, please email um, and put in the subject line factoring company, and I will um, I will give you um, a referral on that factoring company. Okay, so we're gonna finish up tonight. Do you have any questions uh, before we close up tonight? Knowing that we are gonna be doing a Hold on. We are going to be doing a going through agency decision templates um, of what an agency is and how an agency runs in regards to sales. Tomorrow, we're going to go through the standard operating um, process so you can set up your standard operating procedures for every department and how each department runs in detail. Um, and those are the two things that we're going to be doing tomorrow. And do you have any questions? All right. I will wrap it up for tonight. And this will be available to you um, after tomorrow night. And I will see you then. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.